If you're looking for the answers, I still don't have them. But what I do have is a particular set of skills, skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people who mislead, misinform, or misrepresent the sports card industry. So if you don't do that, I'll let it go. But if you do, I'm gonna talk about you. I'm gonna, about, I'm gonna talk about somebody today, as a matter of fact. You know, recently, I did a video called Retail is Dead. I thought it was a pretty innocuous video, but in this day and age, I just don't think that that's something that exists. Uh, no matter what I or anyone says on any topic, it's bound to rub someone the wrong way. Someone will get triggered and well, that is the world we live in today. Before I forget, a quick update to that video. Retail sports card box flipping is still dead. <laughs> you know, that video is both subjective and objective, but here is the bottom line. And it's my opinion that retail flipping of sports card boxes is no longer a viable money-making strategy due to the overproduction and poor quality cards. That's it. Nothing more and nothing less. If you want to continue to flip retail boxes, knock yourself out. If you want to buy retail to rip, knock yourself out. In fact, I got a box right here from Fanatics. I think we're going to rip that in a video coming up. Me and Ty will do it as a fun experiment with no thinking whatsoever that we will make money from ripping a retail box. Just keep in mind that buying and opening boxes with the expectation of making a profit is very likely going to be disappointing. Now this video on the good side, got a decent amount of views. It must have hit some type of mini algorithm or maybe it was the topic, who knows, but we got some new people to the channel. And that's always great. Uh, and, the, and for those of you who are new here, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you discovered us. Um, we have some videos, if you go back, like I, could, I guess they're called Evergreen. They they're never go out of date. They tell you how to do stuff and there's helpful hints. A uh, couple great ones about eBay and grading. So go take a look. And I hope you enjoy it. On the other hand, I did receive a few negative comments, but one of them stood out to me because it highlights an issue that we're seeing more and more in our hobby. Now, while one of the comments may have been from someone who was still attempting to flip retail boxes and was therefore offended by my opinion, um, that's fine. But the other comment led to additional remarks made by the same person on other influencer videos, uh, which brought to light a subject that is becoming increasingly common in our hobby. And I believe it's a valuable topic to discuss and maybe shed some light on. Now, typically, I would simply ignore foolish or stupid comments or respond to them quickly and move on. But in this case, I was informed by another content creator that I had made it because this person left a comment on my video. Now it turns out that this individual also left comments on other sports card creator slash influencers content. And it is no secret that news travels fast in the sports card influencer community. It's the world of the influencer Anadi in case you didn't know. So in light of this, I felt it was worth addressing and bringing these comments or at least some of them to light. Now I refer to these comments like the one left on my video as hit and runs. They leave a snarky comment and then they're off never to appear again. So with any hit and run I think it's only fair that we go back to the scene of the crime and investigate a bit. Oh Andy you're being so petty why give this guy the time and attention. Heaven knows I've tried but I just can't let it go. Let it go. I was going to mention this guy by name, but I don't think that accomplishes anything. That's not the goal here. Plus, you guys are good. You guys are really, really good. And I bet you could figure it out in about five seconds. Again, 
reason for this exercise is I think we can learn from it. And I promise to approach the this with compassion and understanding and to recognize that people who engage in this type of behavior may not always realize the impact of their actions. So the comment to my video was, why act so smug and call people losers? Not a good look. And why call any cards garbage when some people might like some of those cards? This is the first and last time I'll be watching your channel. See what he did there? That, my friends, is your classic hit and run. Uh, here is what's right. Do not bother to respond because I will not be here to hear your reply. It's the YouTube equivalent of... You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. As I mentioned, this guy left comments and got into it with other content creators, influencers, whatever have you. Namely, my friends Brandon. You know him as Bobbles and Ball Cards. Uh, if you haven't subbed to Mr. Bobbles and Ball Cards, do it. He has a plethora of information. And also left some comments, multiple comments, on Dakota, Sports Card Anonymous. Uh, if you haven't checked out Dakota's channel, do so, sub it. He says he's semi-retired. I don't believe it. But you don't want to miss when he puts out a video, so go ahead and pay them both a visit. Now, I won't go into all the back and forth, because there is a lot of back and forth, back and forth, leaving comments... Uh, it goes on and on, and it's like the guy's got to have the last word. You ever run into people like that, that they got to have the, the last word? People seem to have a insatiable need to have the last word on every conversation. It's as if they're convinced that if they don't get the last word in, they somehow feel like they're going to be, like they're the loser in all this. It's, it's like that game Marco Polo, which I never really understood. But instead of yelling Polo, they're yelling, I'm right and you're wrong. It's kind of funny, really. Imagine if every time we had a conversation, we just had to keep talking until the other person threw in the towel and admitted defeat. You know what? You're right. I give up. You win. I will never argue with you again. It's like the never-ending game of verbal ping pong, but I digress. Back to some of these comments. There's highlights that I really want to emphasize what I mean. I think you guys will get it. Uh, Bobbles did a video called Abort! The sports card hobby is over. Great clickbait, clickbait right? Uh, clickbait at its finest. And I was there. I love it. I was there for it. Now, our guy commented, Totally not a fan of the negative headlines. It forms an impression in people's unconscious psyches. And not in a good way. This stuff hurts the hobby, doesn't help in any way. Man, I tell you what, here we go again with the negative headline BS. Let me clue you in on a little secret. It is important to be honest and transparent in our discussion about this hobby. Negative headlines may not always be pleasant, snowflake, but they can serve to highlight problems or issues that need to be addressed. By shining a light on these issues, we can help improve this hobby and make it a more enjoyable and rewarding experience for everyone. Negative headlines do not hurt the hobby. On the contrary, they actually, in a lot of cases, promote growth. And as far as, as, far as forming an impression in people's unconscious psyches and not in a good way, I like this guy... I know that people are capable of thinking for themselves and forming their own opinions and that they're not simply influenced with, with what anyone says or does. I also believe it's important to have an open, honest conversation, even if it might be a little uncomfortable or difficult. It's called the real world. This guy comes across Dakota's video titled, Sports Cards Suck! Again, great clickbait. I loved it. And he left a string, and I mean, as he came back for more, this left tons of comments. And while I won't hit them all, here's some of the highlights. He says, it's funny how people opine like this and likely have never been successful investing in anything. Success they have never successfully invested in anything. In other words, your opinion, Dakota, does not count because you're not successful. This guy, this guy has a gift. Oh, 
You got a gift, my friend. And then he goes on to the comment, the predictable comment. It's, it was only a matter of time before I knew this guy was going to resort or go to this comment. It's when someone is on the ropes, they got nothing left, so they pull out the financial success card. I'm better than you because I make more money. He says, I made eight figures in business and another eight figures in investments. I'm not someone who will take advice from a YouTuber trying to give advice. He gives advice on his channel, though. I watch card videos, and sometimes guys like you show up on my feed, and it's annoying. Is this where we are in our hobby now? Finance, financial success equals status in the hobby? Bragging about their wealth or success in our hobby seems to be the thing these days. Why is it done, I don't know, to impress others, to make themselves feel good? Are they trying to gain status, proof status, recognition within the sports card hobby? Are they insecure or trying to compensate for other areas of their life where they may feel inadequate? Do these guys hold certain attitudes or beliefs that gives them the sense of superiority or entitlement? Does their social or economic status, their education and life experiences, their exposure to certain ideas or ways of thinking make them think they're better than us? Are these attitudes reinforced by people that surround them, leading them to believe that their wealth and success reflect their intelligence or worth as a person? Ultimately, it's really important to remember that intelligence is not determined by one's wealth or social status, and that someone has the potential to be intelligent in their own unique way. We all do. It's important to recognize that the idea that successful people's opinions matter more than others is a subjective belief that may not necessarily be the case. Just because someone is successful in one area of their life does not mean they're automatically more knowledgeable or intelligent about other topics, and that includes sports cards. Everyone has their own unique experiences and perspectives, and it's important to consider that the it's a, it's important to consider and value the opinions of others regardless, regardless of their level of success. And it's also important to recognize that some people may feel more confident in their opinions and may be more vocal about expressing them, which sometimes can lead the impression that their opinions are more valuable. They are not. This hobby is filled with them. They're, they're disgusting people. However, it's important to remember that no one person's opinion is inherently more valuable than anyone's. And most importantly, as we head into the new year, it's important... Don't lose sight of why we're in this hobby in the first place. The reason we collect sports cards, everyone has different reasons. They're varied and personal. It can range from the simple love of sports cards, the thrill of a hunt, to a more serious interest in the financial value of certain cards, each to his own. Listen to yourself. Make your own decisions about what brings you happiness in this great hobby and in life. And do not let others dictate your choices or tell you what you should and should not enjoy. Shame on them. Well, that's it. That got a lot deeper than I really thought going into it. I thought I was going to slam this guy. But anyway, another great, thought-provoking, cerebral episode of the Sports Card Investigators show. I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to wish everyone a happy, happy new year. Um, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit it. If you don't like what you see, you don't want you, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> In any case, until next time, take care.